Okay, so just going to look at some more questions uh, to do with uh, convergent and divergent series. Um, just flick back, so you might want to watch the other video first. Uh, we've got a choice of, uh, in this case here, the, con the, the comparison test, the limit comparison test, the integral test, the alternating series, um, we're looking at absolute convergence possibly, the ratio test, and we're also using the ideas of the P-series and possibly the geometric series. There's lots and lots of things that we need to think about on this topic here. So let's have a look here. So for this particular question, determine whether the series is convergent or divergent. So uh, the key part of this is knowing which of, the, which of those different tests that we need to use. Well, once you've done a few of these questions, hopefully you'll notice that actually this is one that is best suited for the, for the ratio test. Um, and the reason why is because we have something where we're going to have lots of these things cancelling out when we do a n plus 1 over a n. So a lot of these kind of the, the fractions, uh, they cancel out top and bottom. So the first thing we do once we realized it's a ratio test is to, to write out so u n plus 1 is going to be n plus 1 to the power 10 all over 10 to the power n plus 1. Okay, and we're dividing by u n and this is u n here. Okay, and obviously if we divide by a fraction, it's the same as times in by the fraction flipped upside down, which gives me this thing here. So n plus 1 to the power 10 times 10 to the power n, all over n to the power 10 times 10 to the power n plus 1. Okay, and the good thing with this is obviously we've got a 10 to the power n here, and 10 to the power n plus 1. So all of that cancels apart from that lone 10. So we end up with n plus 1 to the power 10 all over 10n to the 10. Okay, so we've kind of simplified it a little bit already. Uh, once we've got that, we want to see basically what happens as the limit of n approaches infinity. For this particular question, uh, the terms are all positive, uh, so we don't actually need to worry about the absolute values on this particular question. Um, so we basically see what happens. So if we put this in here, so this is what I'm trying to find. I want to find the limit as n approaches infinity of this, this thing here. Um, the, the way I think I would probably do this is to, to show you understand that this can be expanded in terms of a binomial. So this is going to be n to the power 10 plus n, so 10 times n to the power 9, dot, 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 and all the way to 1 to the power 10 on this last bit here. And that's, this is still over 10 uh, times n to the power 10. Once you've got it looking like that, well, I think you'll you'll hopefully see that I can use the, the method from previous chapters where I divide by the highest power and then see what happens as n approaches infinity. So I basically divide everything by n to the power 10 and I'm going to get something that looks like this. Again, I don't need to write out every term. I can just kind of put the dots in there to show that I understand what's happening. And then, well, as n approaches infinity, Every one of these fractions here, they're all going to tend towards zero. because one over a very large number will tend to zero. So all that's left is one on the top and then ten on the bottom. Um, so therefore, I've got an answer of one over ten. And this is to check why that gives me a convergence. And there we go. Uh, I know that it's uh, less than one. Let's just check. Yeah, it was 1 over 10. Therefore, it's going to be a convergent, uh, convergent series. Okay, um, let's look at another question or two. This time, I'm going to use the integral test. It's actually told us the integral test this time. to show that the series n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n to the power p is convergent for p greater than 1. Okay. Um, and again, if possible, try and state or try and remember uh, what the integral test actually says. We need a continuous positive decreasing function. Um, and for this actual question, if you look at the mark scheme, two of those six marks actually required that you showed that you understood that it was positive and that it was decreasing. So if you didn't state this kind of fact here, that we knew that 1 over x to the power p was positive and we knew that it was decreasing, if you didn't state that, um, then you wouldn't actually get those two marks. So it's impossible. It is uh, important here just to kind of show that you understand the 
the conditions that we can use this function, or this, uh, this rule, sorry. Okay, so uh, the integral test basically says that we want to integrate from 1 to infinity, 1 over x to the power p. Uh, I would probably rewrite it with x to the power minus p, just so it makes the integration a little bit easier. And then if I do integrate that, well, I increase the power by 1, and then divide by this new power. So I'm going to get this thing here. Um, I'm going to write a goes to infinity, and then I'm going to have the a here, so that's the proper proper way of writing things. Um, and again, if I, I put the values in, I'm going to end up with something like that. Um, and I just need to simplify it, basically. Um, well, again, at, at this point here, possibly rearrange it. I mean, you, you want to try and make it look in a form that it's easiest to understand what's going to happen. So I'd probably, probably rewrite it like this. So we've got um, an a on the top and an a to the power p on the bottom. Okay, so that would contribute to a to the power minus p plus 1. Um, and then I've still got the times by minus p plus 1. Uh, as you can probably see here, well, as a is approaches infinity, well, obviously this is getting big, but this gets big much, much, much quicker. Um, so therefore, this will definitely get towards zero, okay? Because a to the p grows much faster than a. Okay, so this is going to tend towards zero, and so what's left is is this thing here. So minus one over minus p plus one. Okay, and again, if I just refer back to uh, my initial test, basically because I've just showed that this integral converges, then I've also showed also showing that this one converges as well, okay, for the boundary conditions that I was given. Okay, and then just look at one last question. So here we go, we've got an infinite series, um, and is this convergent as well? So uh, this one, we've got a minus 1, k plus 1 here, so this is clearly going to be some kind of alternating series, alternating sequence, um, and so we're going to use the alternating series test. Um, well, we basically just need to look at what the uh, the bn is. In this case here, this is the bn. And all we need to do for this one is to show that uh, bn plus 1 is always less than bn and greater than or equal to 0. Okay, And if we show that, and then we also show that the limit of bn as n approaches infinity is 0, then we show that it's convergent. Okay, so this is what we want. We want to show that um, the k plus 1, so we replace this with k plus 1, replace this with k plus 1. We want to show that this is less than or equal to this thing here. Um, so let's just check we can do that. Again, I'd probably expand out the brackets on this one, so you'd get this thing. And again, we can clearly see that um, we got the 4, we got 4k plus 2, the, basically the 4k plus 2 on this bottom is going to grow um, much quicker than the, the plus 1 on the top. So we've got, a, we've got an additional 1 on the numerator, but we've got a, a 4k plus 2 additional bit on the, on the denominator. And so from as, as k starts at 1 and goes to infinity, yeah, this, this will always be smaller than this one. Okay, it's not especially rigorous that we could make it a bit more rigorous if we needed to but I think that's sufficient for this particular question. Okay, so we show that this is less than this. Um, and then the only other thing that we need to now do is to show, well, the limit as k approaches infinity of this thing here, k over 2k squared plus 1. Well, yeah, that, that's going to approach 0. And that's it. That's all I need to do for this question. So I've now showed the two conditions. Uh, technically, I should also show that this is always greater than or equal to 0. Uh, which it is, um, it's never going to become zero because k is always at least one, uh, and therefore it, it is convergent. Okay, so by the alternating series test, this is a convergent series.